In all of the evolutionist arguments, there seem to be a few things they simply need to avoid. Among those are the evolution of the eye. It comes down to one simple reality. A partial eye is completely useless. It is irreducibly complex. Even Darwin conceded this. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration, could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. If even Darwin thought his theory was absurd, why should the rest of us think any differently? It looks like evolutionists need to brush up on their own science. I had to investigate. When Darwin wrote about the seeming absurdity of the development of the eye, he didn't stop there. It was merely the preamble to the rest of the paragraph, which continues, Yet reason tells me that if numerous gradations from a perfect and complex eye to one very imperfect and simple, each grade being useful to its possessor, can be shown to exist, if further, the eye does vary ever so slightly, and the variations be inherited, which is certainly the case. And if any variation or modification in the organ be ever useful, to an animal under changing conditions of life, then the difficulty of believing that a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection, though insuperable by our imagination, can hardly be considered real. In later editions of Origin of Species, he also added, When it was first said that the sun stood still and the world turned round, the common sense of mankind declared the doctrine false. But the old saying of vox populi vox dei, as every philosopher knows, cannot be trusted in science. So in all, essentially what Darwin was saying was, I realize this might seem instinctively wrong, but it wouldn't be the first time that something counterintuitive turned out to be true. From here, he goes on to illustrate a series of basic gradations and a living example of each one. The fact is that photochemistry has been a part of life since its inception. Nearly every life form on Earth reacts in some way to light. Because of this, it is inappropriate to describe the eye as a singular concept when in fact there are a massive number of structures used to detect light. Even in bacteria, the eye spot can simply be a modified chloroplast which functions similarly to a plant's ability to detect and respond to light. In flagellate bacteria, a simple chemical reaction in the flagellum gives the owner an idea of directionality. In multicellular animals, a simple eye spot is just a cell which reacts to light. This is the result of a mere chemical change in the cell. These photoreactive cells stimulate the nerves around them, and just like that, the organism can detect light and has a decisive advantage. We see eye spots like this today in some of the simplest animal life, such as bell jellyfish. From here, we need only simple duplications to form a light patch which later becomes curved. This slight divot in the skin surrounding the light patch gives a limited degree of directionality. We see this kind of eye today in planarians and other flatworms. It is at just about this point that we see a major division in how eyes can develop. To increase vision, some organisms simply develop several of these visual pits on an increasingly bulbous structure which can eventually be identified as a compound eye, common to nearly all arthropods. This type of eye is extremely extremely efficient in transferring information to the brain but cannot produce vivid images. These types of eyes also happen to be the earliest preserved in the fossil record. This is because, in the early evolutionary arms race, the ancestors of arthropods began excreting calcite through their skin to form a protective shell. As these creatures grow, they are forced to molt and form a new shell. During this process, the calcite over their eyes remains forming a lens. As a result, the calcite in the eyes remains in even some of the earliest trilobite fossils to this day. Those that actually have eyes, that is. Insects, the modern descendants of early arthropods, have taken this eye to an extreme level. As efficient as it is, they still only see in what is known as flicker. In vertebrates, however, the divot or cup is expanded, being larger and containing more photoreceptors, more nerves, and eventually a smaller opening. This eye can be seen today in the nautilus as well, and it offers superior directionality. Next would be a simple lens, which again can be the result 
result of molting. We see these today in marine snails and they allow for focused imaging. Eventually, these structures simply continue to adapt small gradations to become the vertebrate eye that we have today. Other vertebrates take this design even further, like the American bald eagle, which has an extended cornea, allowing for an extremely sharp focus, allowing it to see prey over a mile away. Felines have also adapted the back of their eyes to reflect light, giving it two chances at being detected. This gives cats their distinctively reflective eyes, but it also allows them to see in one-sixth of the light that humans need to see. Eyes have evolved at least 40 times in different lineages. To cover all of the various methods would take hours. As Darwin predicted, every stage and transition between them gives an advantage to the organism possessing it. This may not actually be the sequence of developments that led to our eyes, but that's not what is required to refute the concept of irreducible complexity. Irreducible complexity claims that the development of the eye is impossible. While we may never know how the eye developed for certain, we can show that it is possible through myriad versions. And that's another example of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.